Lord Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is June the 27th, 2021. This is a Sunday morning message. And it is one that I hope will be able to encourage both you and I. Prove yourself a man. Now this is a all male message. Why is that? Because you have the area of being led, we mean it's going to be targeting the males. And, I'm, and the type of men we got in here can handle it. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know these men. One, as a leader in the church. Two, as a leader in the home. Those two areas. You have to prove yourself a man. The, the text that we use in 1 Kings 2, 1 through 12, my brother read that for Now that doesn't mean you're going to have all the money in the house. Your wife may make three times your salary. That doesn't mean you you may not own nothing. You know, some people live in a house. Some men, they may not own nothing. You know, they may not own no, none of the water bill. You know that? No gas. You, you know when you go set up these things, when you move, you know they only put one name on there. Right? They don't put no joint. The water people funny. You know, but at least my water company, they want one name. I'm going to hang one person. So whoever go down there and set it up, and if you call up there and say you're not them, they're going to say, well, we need the person who's on the counter tank. That's how they do. Credit card. Credit worthiness. Sometimes you can get these joint things. A lot of people get away from joint stuff because they know one neck is easier to rain than two. I'm just telling you. Car, one name. House, one name at the top. You might already marry somebody that's got a house. Your name don't have to be on nothing to be the head of the house. When you came out your mother's womb, a male, you're automatically the head of the house, whoever you marry, and you're automatically a leader in the church the minute you get baptized because you're a male. God's not going to change that. You're in, a, you're in a very vile world right now where homosexuality is embraced, applauded, approved of, and encouraged, even in children. They're reaching the children now, telling them. Somebody said, man, you sure talk about homosexuality out the lot. This is making me uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to be uncomfortable. Because as long as I got breath in me, wherever I'm at and whatever I'm doing, I'm going to mention this because it's being encouraged to be one. They're telling you. They're telling your children it's okay to dress like a girl. They're telling you to Dwayne Wade is helping you, he and his wicked wife, to live that life. Yeah, he was a good basketball player, but he's a lousy father and a husband. Yeah, I tell him to his face. He just had to whoop me. I done been whooped before by me. I didn't, first time I didn't go to hell and I got whooped by me. I'm still here. So you have to understand in your heart and mind that they're targeting your family and you. Yeah, they're targeting, telling you, and they're painting the building's colors will let you know we promote. See, it's not a, it's not, it's no longer we accept you as a society. It's, you should have always accept them as a society, as a human being. But now it's, we're telling you we approve this lifestyle. But I haven't seen anybody yet have adulterous month. Not yet. Wife cheaters month. I'm, what's the color for wife cheaters month? Nobody wants that because, see, that hurts the feeling. That bothers a heterosexual when he come home and his wife in the bed with another dude. That hurts him. That bothers him. So there's no glory there. You see the difference? See, because Satan knows, oh, I get y'all on that one anytime. The one I'm having trouble selling y'all on is the homosexual package. So Satan, I'm having trouble on that one because it's against nature. See, it's not against nature for a man and woman to be in bed having sex. That's not against nature. That's not even against nature even if one of them is married to someone else. That's against God's morals. You understand that? That's against God's morals. But that's not against nature. Because that's what men and women do have sex. But two dudes and two women, that's against nature. That means that in no way did God design your brain to work like that. Everybody got that? You have to want to think like that. That's a sin that you have to look in the mirror and say, I'm not a dude, I'm a lady. And fool yourself. Like look in the mirror and say, I'm a hog with tusk in my face. That's what that's like. That's against nature. 
Because God didn't make anybody like that. Anybody telling you people are confused on that? They say, well, they're confused on that because they want sin. Even the person born with two deformed genitals is not confused on their gender. They're lying to you. They know what they are. See, because now, who going to fix him if he confused inside? You going to fix him? You can't reach inside the soul of a man. What does 1 Corinthians 2 say? Who knows the thoughts of a man? You can't touch that. Mm -mm. Only he knows. That's telling you. He knows he's a man. But he want to slide in in both categories. So that's why you, you judge by the outward. You got to judge by the outward. You got to let him know, okay, you're going to be a man, be a man. You're going to be a woman, be a woman. So prove yourself a man. This is what Solomon tells his son. So some of us didn't realize you got to prove that you're a man. When I go to text, I think David would know what to say on his dying bed. He knew how to target two men's life. God approved it. Solomon killed them both. Y'all remember that? You know, you got some saints. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 2. You got some saints that think David put a hit out on them people illegally. Do you know God would have killed David? You think God going to let a man on his dying bed put a hit out on an innocent man like and let him go to heaven? God said, I don't even want you in my temple if your hand has been full of blood. No, God wanted Shimea and, and that other knucklehead to die that was giving David so much trouble. These sons of Ruhr, they gave David trouble. He said, oh, you need to take joy, how about two? He said, use your wisdom. Who did he get his wisdom from? God. And he gave him a decree he knew he couldn't follow. He got them both. This is what you have to understand, brother. God will put a hit out on you. Don't let, don't let these, these preachers on TV, you don't even know if they're women or men. Amen. Some of them wise, more manly than them. You don't know what they are. You know, man, which one is the dude? You see some of these guys on TV preaching? Like, man, why are you so sallow? Why are you so feminine? You don't know how to be a dude. You don't know how to be a dude. You know, men, you know, men handle themselves a certain way. You know, men position themselves a certain way when they talk. Y'all understand that? Do you know that God going to put a man in hell for acting like a woman? So you think it's confused. Do you know if you don't teach your male children, your female, how to act their role? You know you're not doing your job. You got to teach them. You know, teach them. I'm not talking about sometimes people stamp their hand. I'm talking about acting like a girl. Acting like a dude. You have to teach your family. Brethren, that's your role. You have to tell them, you know, you, you don't act like a woman no more. You act like a dude. Are you a dude or are you a woman? I'm not coming in no more. The door swings out and waves. See, now y'all look at me, you man, you heard me say that before. I'm not cruel. You can ask both my kids one of me or not. I'm, I'm a very compassionate fellow. I extend a lot of mercy because much has been done to me. But I will pull that card if you start acting like a girl or you start acting like a dude and you're the opposite gender. I'm going to pull the card. I'm going to say, hey, let's talk. Here's the card, the Bible. What's wrong with you? Do you forget what women act like? Did you forget what women act like? You don't know what a woman is no more? Do you know that God will put a woman in hell for acting like a man? See, your spirit is masculine, not your body. So you have to understand, you have to present yourself like a female. Now, I don't care what you wear to do it, but everybody needs to know you're a female. I had a young lady tell me the other day that her boyfriend sent a message to pick her up. She got the message. She said, well, I didn't want you to think I was a guy because I got this basic. I got said, no, I knew you was a girl when I saw you walking. I know what a woman looked like. I said, I knew you was a woman. She laughed. I said, no, I knew you wasn't him. I said, that's why I was looking around, looking for the dude. You got somebody, you don't know, you don't know if that's a woman or a man. What's wrong with you? Listen, let me tell you something now. The Bible says long has a shame to a man. Now, you know what, brother? We're getting real off track. And I have to check myself sometimes. I remember to keep saying. I remember I said one day we had a brother that had long hair. And I told him, I said, now, brother, yours not that long. I say, but you act masculine. But I wasn't going to apologize for that text. Long hair is a shame to a man. I don't care what you see these guys wearing today, brother. Let me read that text now. I know, I know, that's time to preach. I ain't going to be long, because I promise I'm not going to be long no more. No, I promise. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you're going to love the Lord. I want me to be the reason you mad at the Lord. No, but we're fixing to read this text. Uh, look, if you will, 
2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to read this text. 1 Corinthians 11, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. You know, it's, it's getting to the place now where you and I are going to have to check ourselves, brother. You can't be everybody's friend. When the Lord says you got to leave the world, that doesn't mean you go and regularly eat with dope dealers. You know that, right? You know, he's going to the biggest dope dealer house in the land now that he, because he, he a saint. That don't mean that, that you make them your boys. That means that you regularly are going to have to interact with them, whereas you shun the saint that's slinging dope. But that don't mean every time they see you riding in a dope dealer car, that's not what Paul is saying. Did you see him hanging around sinners? He taught sinners. But what Paul is telling you, you can't teach saints that go back sinners no more. You can't commune with them, brethren. You can't do that. I'm about to tell some of my family members, you might not want to come around here no more because, you know, you, you don't want to change. You can ask them. And I'll be the, listen, they can call me in the middle of the night. I'll help them with a physical thing. You know, but I'm, I, I still want you at the house. We come over there. No, you not. Not if you got a. Not if you a girl with a girlfriend. You're not coming to dinner, unless both of y'all come in. knowing we're gonna we're gonna have Bible study as soon as we get to eat. So I'm fixing. We're gonna have Bible study before we eat. Make sure you're eating my food and leave. Nah. Uh -uh. Look at First Corinthians 11, verse 14. This is book. Chapter and verse. This has nothing to do with culture. This has to do with creation. Thus, not even nature. That's not culture. God didn't create culture. God created nature. Men create culture. Itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame on him. I'm, I'm, we do. To a woman, it's glory. Now you see, I'm not gonna keep reading. You read. You now you now you ask God. Did he lie? You should be embarrassed to have long hair where people think you're a girl. They had a commercial on television. I ain't going to tell no survey where a guy was bending down getting milk and it was a comedy thing. And the guy was going to say, hey, ma'am, let me help you. He turned right out a beer. But if his hair wasn't down his back, the dude wouldn't have thought he was a girl reaching for milk. That's your fault. Cut your hair like a man. That's what's wrong, brother. All these, some, sometimes some dreadlocks too long when you look like a girl. I know we don't want to tell about it, but you know what, brother? That's why I sleep so good. Forgive me, I woke up late this morning. I sleep so good, I have trouble waking up. I sleep hard and good, like the Bible says. A laboring man, say, so come in at 2 in the morning, I sleep hard. My wife has trouble getting me up. I say I'm up, she come back, he's still in the bed. God forgive me, I, but I'm not losing a minute sleep over nobody, no relative or nobody else that's wounded by something I said. That's in the Bible. We have a problem with sandals in the Bible. If you got long hair, you need to cut. If somebody comes up to you and say, you know, man, I thought you was a girl. You need to say, well, it's time to go get to the barber now. Or get some scissors. Because your hair too long. You look like a girl. Now, that's not to say women with short hair look like dudes. I'm not saying. He's, he didn't say, and women with short hair, it teaches you this. Now, did you read? Does not nature teach you itself that women with short hair is a shame? Now, you didn't read that, did you? Now you see the way we switch that? You did not read up not nature teach you itself that women with short hair is a shame. You didn't read that right. People lose their hair, falls out. Some people like their hair short. But a dude with long hair is a shame. Why? Because it looks like a girl. Why? Because God is concerned about masculinity. The identity of there's a dude over there. There's a guy. I'm in trouble. Mr. Help me. Not, Mr. Uh, lady, uh, what are you help me? See, so. See, brethren, this is how far homosexuality has pushed. I'll talk to a homosexual for anybody, will. If he got a dress on, don't care. I'm not scared of him. He ain't going to hurt me. The key, all female, but in love, I'm going to let you know that if the opportunity avails itself, no, you're wrong. No, you ain't better do that and make it to heaven. Mm -mm. And then you just won't speak to me anymore, and I'm still going to eat and live. Still going to eat. And have to exercise and make sure I watch myself. I'm going to be eating so much. Just telling us, it is what it is, bro. And you understand, somebody say, you know, this, this, I love this one. 
What if you had people in the family like that? Don't never ask me that one. Oh, boy, we, now you're going to have to have some time. We're going to have us a long talk. Because I will tell you how I deal with my family on all issues. All issues. Homosexuality, heterosexual, all issues. We have talk, we sit down, and I expect things from you. And if I see different, bypass my house and just go somewhere. Else. Because no, I'm not going to accept you as no homosexual. I'm sorry. Love you. If you're in the hospital, yeah, I'm going to be there. I, I've gone to funerals with family members that they told me my family was a homosexual. I saw the boyfriend up there crying over the coffee. I knew. I know the person. I saw them when they were dying in the hospital. I wasn't scared to go in there. You know, but hey, it is what it is. Members of the church. I, I'm no homosexual members of the church. A bunch of them. I didn't even know they was until somebody told me. I wasn't scared to be around. So that's no homophobic bunch of liars and homosexual men. Nobody scared you. What could you do to a heterosexual? Nothing. If you raped us, you just send your soul to hell quicker. That's all. Somebody's scared of you, man. You don't have nothing we want, and you're not anything we want to be. But we love you. Like we love all heathens. Key is that you, you're not going to heaven. You can dance on TV all you want to do, be look like one. You're not going to heaven. That's all we need to tell you. Now, pass that. We love you. I'll work right next to you. When we have lunch, we're in the lunchroom. I'll eat right across from you. I don't care. Because, see, you're a sinner. Now, if you're a saint and we in the lunchroom, guess what? I'm not going to eat with you with that dress on. I'm going to go over here and eat. He said, but I'm your brother. No, you're not because you're acting like a woman. You, you, oh, you mean you're my sister? <laughs> so which I thought, I don't know how you're my brother dressed like a woman, acting like a woman. You're my sister, and you're still wrong. You, you, which one you want to be? See, brethren, this is the problem. Prove yourself a man. That's the text. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. David, I'm thinking to die. I am dying. Not getting old. I am dying. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, thou therefore, and show thyself a man. Show thyself a man. Why would he tell this man? Was Solomon wearing a dress? No, it's not him. No, man, you know. Show yourself a man. Show that you're a man. Can you do it? And that's not just to the homosexual. That, that's to all men. Show thyself a man. A shoe, which is shoe. It means show. Show thyself a man. To validate. Is that what you are? The key is, is. A man as an individual, H for Hebrew 376. H for Hebrew 376. A male person, I'll use as an adjunct to a more definite term. Dealing with masculinity. Man, show yourself a man. Not a human, a man. A man. Y'all already know he's a human. So how does he do that? He says, and keep the charge of the law thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgment, and his testimony as is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and with us all thou turnest thyself. That's every area of life. So when you go to the movies, you should be acting like a man. Acting like a man. Would you go up to the movies and somebody just come up to your Wife or girlfriend say, hey, baby, looking good. Start talking. See, this is why we don't understand as saints. You know, you know, somebody just come up to your, to your woman, you wouldn't just start, you know, say, well, you know, she, now if she may warn and say, hey, baby, okay, all right, then you leave both of them now. But if she has a problem with it or steps back, say, you know, you can be cordial. Hey, sir, you know, get away. You know, I'm looking, looking for somebody to help me with this case. Because if, if I have to grab you, if you don't hurt me, you definitely going to get hurt. Okay, I'll be a girl. I don't care what I got to get. Cause now, look, man, you're not going to come and disrespect my woman. That's it. I have, that's my God-given right. I'm less than a man if I don't do that. It don't matter if she got to bury me. At least I die valiant. Because I'm useless if I'm going to be alive and then do going to rub all on your wife while you're standing up. You know, they got some crackheads, drug addicts, people that drink too much that'll do that. 
But that's what stripes are for, the back of a fool. Did you think that only meant children? Stripes are for the back of a fool. I'm not promoting violence, but you better have yourself right in public. So I'm about, you know, everybody's not scared to go to jail for valiant reason. I've never been in jail, but I don't care about going to jail for handling a man disrespecting my wife in the sense of coming up after I tell him to get away, man. Use a profanity, then I'm going to knock you out. And I'm saying it with the Bible in my hand. You won't move, I'm going to ask you to move, man. I'm saying it nicely. I'm going to pray to God, God help me not kill this fool right now. And that's, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm through. Now the prayer has been lifted because I've taken counsel before I war, right? We talked that last week. Counsel before I war with God. And now we're going to war. And I guarantee you God going to let me win. You know why? Because first of all, he don't even like you because you're not his child. I don't care if you are a saint. You're not walking right now. Two, he loves me. Like David said, he liked me. I'm going to always. I never worry. I never worry about stuff like that. If somebody breaks my house, I never worry about it. I'm going to take you out. They're going to drag you out because I'm in my home and my God will protect me. And if he doesn't, then it's my end. He's going to use that example for someone else. But they're they not going to wake me up and say they beat you up and took you on. No, they wake me up at paradise and say they beat you up and took you on. No. Mm -mm. See, that's what men do. That's what a man does. He lays down his life. The Bible says you lay down your life for your friend. What good is your life? You're not willing to lay down to prove your masculinity. It's ridiculous, brother. That's what's wrong with a society that has refused to accept the identity of male and female. That's all right. That's, all. That's why when I see certain stuff going on, I go like, I, I fall on my face and pray, and I go eat me some chicken, and I'm gone. Be like, had you hear? Yeah, I heard about the thing fail. Yeah, I heard the building fail. Yeah. So what I'm supposed to do? Pray it wasn't no saint. Then that's it. Man, I told you this year was going to be crazy. Amen. You got brethren just not going back to church. And they not going to say they sorry. So you're going to still see crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And it may never happen to them. But you're going to hear some crazy. Because God is listening. He's like, I'm not hearing nobody. I guess I need to send some more storms and tear some more buildings up. Tear some stuff up. Make some more bridges fall on people's head. All kind of manner of unusual stuff. And people acting like it's not. Children getting shot up. People getting shot. You can't hardly go. You can't even go to the mall without getting shot by some angry person. And you know the problem with these guys is nothing but cops. You can't, you, know, you can't even pay them a check to get a gun. And go fight in Afghanistan. You can't pay him a check. You know, they pay souls. Now, you can't give him a check to go shoot a wild, crazy sinner over here in another man's land and ask for your help. But he'll shoot a woman. So he's a terrorist. No, he's a coward. Anybody, there's a guy, some guy shot a woman in the back going to exercise. How much more coward can you be to shoot a person in the back? And then you shoot a, a, a woman of all things. But you talk, no, see, and this is, what, this is what the problem, intermingling the genders causes men to act like women. Or forget what masculinity is. It's just, you know, just not the way it is, you know. They couldn't even run and stand up face to face and shoot on their face, shoot on the back, because I'm a coward. So when you get picked up after doing crime, I don't care, I, I, whatever happened to you, it happens. I don't have time to watch all these TV shows, man. But I know one thing, very few people get beat down by police that's innocent. It happens, but it's less of. Don't be committing crimes and think you're not going to get handled by the police. It's ridiculous, man. I know this society is poison. You can commit a crime. So you got guys arrested, and they got to walk him. He shot up a bunch of people. His leg is bleeding, and they walk him cordially to be arrested. You hear what I'm saying? They just killed, the guy killed several people. His leg is bleeding. He's mentally challenged, but he was walking good. He didn't try to hit none of the police. He didn't try to kick them like they do on TV and turn flips and then run with his handcuffs <laughs> on. He walked cordially. But let me shout something to you. Everybody don't get to make it to jail. You know that, right? Some crooks you never going to find. I ain't going to tell you why, but you're never going to find them. 
Because some people get tired of taking people to jail. Some officers. I'm just telling you what's going on in the world. You might not make it to jail. So tell your kids, you might not make it to jail. Depends on what crime he did. If, if it happened to his family, he might be thinking about that. No, oh, that's worth the risk. This one's not going to make it. Instead of going through it, just don't find your body. And if the other one dap him and say, yeah, that's what we're going to do. They never tell it on each other. And you don't know if the Lord wants that. They don't say what the Lord wants. The Lord may not want them to go to court. He may I want this one dead. And I'm going to give y'all grace because I want him dead. But don't talk about what God do with his minister. If he wants his minister to take your breath, your breath is gone. Because his other ministers don't know how to judge in court no more. So tell your kids, stay out of trouble. If the policeman tell you, come here, drop what you're doing, yes, sir. Because you might not make it to jail. This is the way it is, brother. Don't tell God what to do, because this society don't tell God what to do. And I don't know what's going on in the officer's mind. When they do what they do, I don't know what's going on. So don't try to be God. So we see here, he says... That the Lord may continue for us for his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth, with all their heart, with all their soul, that there shall not fail thee, said he, man on the throne of Israel. So David said, says, now, if you do this, you know, and you teach your children, I should always have somebody sitting on the throne. Moreover, thou knowest also that Joab, the son of Zerid, did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, unto Amnon, the son of Ner, and Amasah, the son of Jether, whom he slew. Man, this dude got a, a history rap sheet out of this world and shed the blood of war in peace and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his lawns and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his whore head go down to the grave in peace. Don't let, don't let his head get hairy, gray. Don't let him die like that. Put him in the, put him in the grave with his hair thick, jet black. Not great. That's what he said. Did y'all read? That's what he said. But show kind to the sons of Brazil, the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so came to me when I fled because of Alson and thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Shimea, the son of Gera, a Benjamite of Behurim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went into Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. So he said, I'm not going to kill you. He didn't say nobody is. Now therefore hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man, and knowest what thou art to do unto him. But his whole head bring thou down to the grave with blood. See, so he said, okay, now his hair don't be great. But make sure he don't die because, oh, I want you to kill him. That's the, that's the text. God says, yay. Nobody's punished for it. Solomon's not punished. David's not punished. And God says, yay. Because it happened. There's no pun. There's no ill spoken against it. So David separated his father and was buried in the seat of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel, 40 years, 40 years, 7 years reigned he in Hebron. 33 years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father. And his kingdom was established greatly. There it is right there. So, what do we do now with this understanding? Watch the way you are walking and that before God that it will be in truth. This is how you show yourself a man as a male. Solomon was a king. Christians are kings and priests. Make sure that you carry out the duties that men that died before you did not finish because their life ran out. We've had some great men die before us. Some of you from other congregations, we know right here we've had some great men die. Brother Anthony Cosman, and we had great men that have left our number. And, and you know others from other places. I'll mention about one most recent that we know how to finish the work because his life ran out. I finished the work now. I'm going to do So we need to show ourselves a man. That's what we need to do. That's what he did. And that's what we must do. Revelation chapter 1. Just like Solomon. We're a king. And we're a priest. Like Aaron. Let's see if the text says that. Yeah, it's a metaphor. But it applies to us spiritually. We're just not in the law of Moses. 
Revelation 1 and 4, he says, Revelation uh, 5, forgive me, and from Jesus, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kingdom of earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Man, that's a whole lot for somebody to do. David didn't wash Solomon of his own blood, but Christ left us a decree to carry out that we should do. And he made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So notice, so we're kings and priests to God, his father. Just like Aaron was. So we got duties that we got to do. Jeremiah says, stand in the ways. Look at Jeremiah chapter 6. He says, stand away. You should be able to look in the ways of masculinity and know when a man is acting like a woman. You got to tell him, you can't act like no woman. You got some guys that, you, you know, Men cry. Jesus will. But Jesus just keep crying. The pastor come, Lord, get up, man. <laughs> I, just got, I can't go on, y'all. You didn't see that, man. At some point, you wipe your face and say, okay, we got to handle this. Got to do it. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus said the Lord, stand you in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk there and say, don't just look at it. Walk in it. And you shall find rest for yourself. But they said, we will not walk there. He killed them. That's why Israel was destroyed. The elders said, we're not going to use that with the Lord. Then let them go. Jeremiah chapter 10. He says, I'm going to help you walk in the right way. 10.23. Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not a man that walketh to direct himself. So he says, oh, Lord, correct me. But with judgment, not in thine anger, that thou bring me to nothing. But look who he says. Look, he says, Lord, this is who I want you to kill in your anger. Watch it. That's a group you kill in your anger. Pour out thy fear upon the heathen. Uh-oh. So that's the group. That know thee not. What? What's it mean, know thee not? No, don't just kill them and they don't hear the gospel. Tell them the gospel and then kill them. Because they don't know you. They don't want that relationship. And upon the famines, what? The children, yes, that call upon thy name, for they have eaten up Jacob. See that? He says, he says and upon the famines that call not on thy name, the children kill him, for they have eaten up Jacob. Wow. And devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate. He said, get angry with them. Kill them. So, He's a weeping prophet, but he wasn't crying for them, was he? No. Jesus said he was the way to truth and I like the way to walk in. John 14 and verse 6. Jesus said, I'm the way. So he said, well, what way do we walk in? The way Jesus walked. The way Jesus walked. That's the way we walk in. John 14, 6. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known the Father also. From henceforth you know and have seen him. Philip said to them, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Then he said to them, Have I so long been with you, and you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that had seen me had seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Now, if there is not a Father other than Jesus, why does he say, you know, talking about somebody else? You know crazy people talk like that, right? I saw God yesterday. It's okay to talk yourself, but don't look back like somebody with you. He's like, I said, okay, see, he's talking to himself in the wrong way. You know, you don't ride in the car and talk yourself. You're like, man, I got to get myself together. I got to get this done today. You don't go, you know what I'm saying, and talk to There's nobody there. See, that means there's something wrong mentally. That's a different thing. No, no, you don't talk yourself like that. Absolutely not. That's ridiculous, brother. So the idea is that Jesus would be crazy if he's talking about somebody else that doesn't exist. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? That's two different people. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Jesus said, this is the reason. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and the greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father listen and whatsoever you shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son if you shall ask anything in my name I will do it if you love me keep my commandments and I pray the father and he shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not 
He says, neither nor them. But you know I'm for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. So, watch this. Did Jesus call a dude a girl? So stop calling dudes girls, whoever you are. I'm not going to look at Marcus, girl. Oh, that's just something we say. Don't do that. You lost your mind. That's a dude. Did you see G tell Peter, girl? Did you see Judas? Did you see Jesus even say about Judah? She don't listen to me. You don't think something wrong with us in this world? And you think somebody like that gonna go to heaven? That's playing with God like that? So you can't play like that. You got to reach a point where you go, okay. Don't take God's name in vain. Calling God's name out. OMG trash like that. And you wondering why buildings falling on people? Jesus said the tall salon. He said, you think that was the most evil people? He said, you're going to perish too. He said, you're going to perish. You saints. He would tell us, y'all going to. He would tell us, did y'all see that building fall? Jesus would say, in Miami, or Florida, wherever it fell. He would say, oh, uh, you think that was the worst sin of heart? Y'all can go to hell too, just like that. That's what he would tell us right now. And that's what I'm telling you. We're going to go to hell too like that. We're going to perish like that in hell if we don't repent. All I'm doing is talking smart to my mom and dad. You're going to go to hell too. Disobedience of parents. All I do is, you know, I speak well of homosexuals. You're going to go to hell too. That's what he said. He said, yo, it didn't fall on you, but you're going to perish like that. They perished in a tar salon. The people perished in Miami or far, wherever it was. And we're going to perish. What he's saying, you're going to die like that too. You're going to be destroyed spiritually. He's talking about spiritual death. So you can't do that, bro. We have, to under, we have to make adjustments in life. All of us. Jesus said, don't call no man father. Don't call a man rabbi. So whoever kept running up to John calling him rabbi, Jesus expected him to stop. He expected them to stop. They did call. They said, don't, he said, don't do that. I got to correct John and them too. John, not me. He told you he's not me. I tell John. John said, you should be baptizing me. Because he know I'm sin, Lord. Because he could have said, I'm sin, because that's his cousin. Mm, 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 mm. Take care of the unfinished business of the saints. What did he tell Solomon? Carry out this business. We have work to do in the church. We have work to do in the community. We have work to do in your house. I got work to do in my house, in the community I live in. You got to tell people right from wrong. My neighbor came up, we were talking just casually. And uh, I said, Do you ever ask the guy you worship with why y'all use entry? He said, What's in the Bible? I said, No. Nah. Uh, Acts 17, 24, and 25 says, You know, you can't worship God with entry. He said, I'm going to go look it up. And he walked up. I hadn't heard from him yet. I waved at him yesterday. He didn't come with a scripture because it's not in the Bible, is it? So I wait like that. Pump up. I'll tell you, Happy Father's Day. Pump up. I don't have to bring a scripture. You're supposed to tell me it's not in the Bible. I was wrong. I know it's in the Bible, and I'm not wrong. Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. We have to have leaders in the church. Church without leaders, you ought to be wondering what is wrong with y'all. Y'all don't have no elder. You ain't got one elder. If you just had one elder and you're working on that, you still have one. I remember a brethren used to talk about people, so they got one pastor. At least the Baptist church did acknowledge they had one. You weren't even one, and you don't want to be one. I remember a brother used to preach that he's dead now. He didn't want to be one. He didn't have one. At least he had one. One is it's not one better than none, brethren. Amen. If you had one, is that not better than none? Come on, brethren. At least he had one. And if he had a system with no problems, so many elders on y'all part of the church. Brethren still preachers, they won't lie. They say he had two, and you don't have none. I told him, I talked to him, bro, I said, he don't have none. At least they had two in the Baptist church. They ain't not the church, but at least they understood that part. They had two. You got zero. You know, when even God talked about somebody, that, that's like me saying, man, about, he, he, he got a car, and it's not new. And they ask you, do you have one? No, I, I walk to work. Nah, see, it, it's, it, it's understood when you do it like that. Titus 1 5. But it's cause I left thee in Crete that thou should have said in all the things that are wanting and ordained the elders in every city as I had upon thee. He said, Be a man. I left you to be a man there. Do your job. I left you there. Ordained elders. 
If any be blameless, a husband or one wife, having faithful children, not accused of rod or unruly, he must be holy like Jesus and holier than Jesus. Is that in your Bible? No. Isn't that sad? That's not in the Bible. So that they have no reason for them not to have. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-will, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but a love of hospitality, a love of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Keith had worship in his house. That's why he's an elder. That was a hospital, but he had worship in during the poison COVID death time. That's why he's an elder. Robbing them with worship that was by the house. That's why he's a deacon. You don't get these positions just because well, I just got to fill some and put some names on the dotted line. No, it's a, people have deserved that right, and we need those leaders in the church. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught. So he has to be taught so he may not know the thing until he teaches that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exalt and convince the gainsayer. You need help. You need help. Look at Acts 20 and 28. Acts 20 and 28. He calls a talk to the elders. He wants to tell them some things. Take heed therefore unto yourselves, unto all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. He says, okay, I, I need you to do your work. The elders got to do their work. Other men have died. Older men have died. Okay, now he got some other men. So you got to do the work. Got to do the work. They got to tell us things we may not want to hear. For I know this, that after my departure, or departing, shall grievous rules enter in among the, you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking of verse thing, to draw away disciples out there. People get so excited. Man, the elders might try to take over the church. Okay. That's what the text said. So you would stand them down, talk to them, try to reason with them about the Bible. Say, brother, you can't run the church. There's still no reason not to have them. It's ridiculous. Because the preacher, let me tell you, you know who running the church? Well, you worship the preacher that don't have elders. He running you and the church and trying to be Jesus. And somebody said, well, you know, men not qualified. And they ask him, are you qualified? He'll tell you no. And he's glad to say no. You know why? Because he don't want the job anyway. He don't want it anyway. Well, you know, my children are not faithful. Are they in the house with you? So what you care about your children not faithful? They're in the house with you? You spoke because I was in your house. Well, brother, because you don't want to be one. That's why. He don't want to get talked about. He don't want to have to stand with the doctrine. He don't want to visit the sick. He's scared to get sick. He don't want to visit the sick. Well, you know, I'm an older man. All elders are older men. There's no young elders. That was the stupidest thing to say, catching COVID. I don't know about young. And those things are young elders. They may be youthful and apparent, but all, they're older men. We got older people in the church. Every church has older people. <laughs> His brothers are insane. I've never heard such doctrine of foolishness. My goodness. He says, therefore, watch my room by space of three years. I cease not to warn you, everyone, day and night with tears. Warn them, saying, look, man, we got to do this. Work got to be carried on. Things have to be said. Deacons, 1 Timothy 3 and 8. Important too. The work has to go on. 1 Timothy 3 and 8. Now, brethren, you can't be a deacon if you don't go to church. We talked about that. I'm talking about Elva. Sunday go by. No show. Sunday, no show. Sunday, no show. No excuse. No reason. No nothing. Y'all got me? How you gonna be a leader? You don't go to church. Oh, man. It's time to turn Baptist and start dancing like the Baptist, not. Nah. If we're going to do that, let's just start dancing. I'm going to get a tambourine, man. If we're going to live like that. 1 Timothy 3 and 8. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not giving them much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Let these also be proved for. Prove yourself a man. We have that here. The men are proving themselves man. Man, we're masculine. I'll never have to tell one of our leaders, don't wear no dress today. It's Sunday. <laughs> have you had to tell them? Have you had to tell them? Right? Yeah, I, tell I remember telling them. I remember saying, brother, you're walking like a lady. Why are you twitching? <laughs> masculine and masculine in spirituality. I say, brother, please come to church. You would lead a please. I'm never to tell. I'm never have to do that to these brothers here now. <laughs> oh man. 
Lord, help us, Jesus. And they've been sick and come to church. Sick and come to church. Brother Carl will come to church sick. They are rolling a chance at all. Seen it. Hands shake when you shake it. Sick. You got guys with muscles and strong. And if you call them in a week, catch them because they at work. Amen. But Sunday, cricket. Trick, trick, trick. Y'all with me? Hey, it is what it is. You support a man like that as a woman, we're going to watch you fall next. No, we don't have to know about it, but we'll see it at the judgment. You, man, you got to, you got to tell your husband time, baby. You got to be a man. You got to be a man. Squeeze his hand. You got to be a man. You know. My wife has to tell me for you. You got to be a man. You got to be a man. You got to handle this. Yeah, yeah, you know. That's what Deborah told Barack. That's not her man. She said, you, you say, you know, I'll tell you go into this battle. That's not running your house. That's telling your husband to be a man. I've seen sisters do this till they are. Let me show you something. No names called. I know some sisters that pampered their husband. He was a woman. He, he, he come on. Come on and grabbed his hand like a little girl. Come on. They hurt you. And he left her for another woman. I'm done on that subject. Now you tell me. And I know this is a fact. I could die and whisper this on my deathbed. They told me. They told me. But if you hadn't grabbed his hand like a female and told him you need to stand and be a man. Stand and be a man. Work at this church. You grab his hand like a female. And he became like a female, weaker than masculine. And he took another woman and told you, bye like on a good ship, bye. I left you. You can say you ain't want it. You want it. Don't lie. You want it. You don't know you told me you want it. I'm done. Now nobody know who I'm talking. Don't try to guess. So let these first be proven. Let them use the office of deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful, and all things. How's that accompany him? Because he's the head of the house. And he tells her, that dress you had on was so short, I saw your underwear. And you tried to squat. Don't wear that no more. You can't control me. And after several sessions, the door swings out, honey. It still works. I'll oil it if it don't. It swings out. See, when a man can't control the house, you're, you're, it's not about being lead. You're headed for disaster. See, you have to tell your spouse, especially in mixed marriage, you got to tell you, mixed meaning saints, sinners. And I'm about to tell them, you got to tell them, you know, the children going to church with me. And when, if I work all day Sunday, don't take this child to that place. I'll take $50 and pay my cousin to come sit with them. When you don't do that, that's when stuff starts going wrong in your life now. Mm -hmm. I've seen it, brethren. I walk a certain way because I don't want to go to hell. And I can talk about this stuff. There ain't no way I'm going to be at work and my wife is going to take my kids to the Baptist church. I'm going to have a sit there and say, well, y'all trust me. Then you stay home and you don't go to your church. But don't let me catch them children at the church. I told you that. That's it. Or you can take them and go get another husband. Then I, I can't do nothing about it after that. Because now they're not going to be in the house. The house got to be controlled. It's just a matter of speech. Ain't got to hit nobody. Ain't got to bust no dishes. Ain't got to cut no ties. Don't have to lock up no money. Just say it. Amen. Pray to the Lord and say, Lord, it is in thine hand. Now, whatever the Lord decides to do, it happens. It happens. He may let Joe next door take her because he don't want her either. She may tell you, keep them bad children. And you say, praise God. He asked my parents, I don't think you're going to keep everything. It don't always work like that. You keep the Lord, maybe the kids, but you're not going to keep everything. Might be in a one-room apartment. I'd rather be in a one-room, like I said, call a hot top than to go to hell. You just, you can't do it, brother. It's not about if the children become believers. It's what did you teach them? What did you show them? That's what it's about. You're taking to the judgment on what you showed them, not what they became, about uh, as judge for another man's sin. So he says clearly, let the deacon be a husband and one wife just applies to the elders too, ruling their children and their own houses well. So you can't make a child get baptized, but you can make him come to church. 
That's why a lot of kids in that lead house, they quit going to church. But I just tell them, you quit going to church, quit coming to this house too. If you don't go to the Lord's house, don't come to this house either. You sick? You need some money like you're about to lose your heart? Because I don't want you to lose your heart, then you be trying to live with me. You sick? You need some... Okay, then, no sense in coming over here. Did you go to the Lord's house? Did you go to the house of God? Did you worship? I'll ask them. My daughter, I'll ask them, did y'all go to church? You know, if I didn't hear, did y'all go to church? See, sometimes you ask, what church? We go to 15th Street Church of Christ. How often do you go? That's the next question. Because if you call, I say, man, I didn't even, what's their name? Man, never seen them people. And he don't have about 20 men. He never seen them people. I know about everybody in here, you know. No kid not going to no church. You say, well, brother, and sister, I'm going to don't believe. It is a sense that I'm going to believe in this sense because of the lion won't eat them. So they don't be running up on you with their disaster. They stole my car. My boss fired me because I was like, nah, man, look, we don't want no lions eating. Go to church, please. At least have some physical stability so you don't be whining on me. That's what the law says, physical stability. I won't let the lion eat you. And then after I teach you enough, then I'll slay you later, spiritually. Um, that's, that's, that, read the pattern of the implanted citizens that were not Jews in the ten tribes. What God did to them. Pull up the key word, lion. When you see eating people, then you'll see the law of Thomas. They still worship their God. They say, you're going to come to my house too. Once he was through teaching them, then he let the nation come in and kills them. That's how it happens. It is what it is. Transplanted false Jews, but yet he required them to go to service. That's important to have the knowledge, brethren, of the truth. So it says, for they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase themselves a good degree and great bonus in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. People make the elder post so huge. They said, this is a great degree to be a deacon. To be a deacon. This is a great position. A Bible teacher. Great position. It is actually before the others. Because the, the, the world has to be taught by teachers. And then you develop evangelists. And then you develop, because that's the politics, the God. Uh, uh, the deacons. And then you develop your different areas, your elders. But the teacher was first. Read 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Read it. See what it says. I'll show you. In order. You got to be taught. Teachers are very critical. Bible teaches Acts 14 and 1. You're going to wrap up here. We're done. You can look at your own Ephesians 4, 11 through 24. We're just going to pull one of those verses. But we're going to pull the highlight verse. We won't tag the lesson. But I would read other verses, Ephesians 4, 11 through 24. Acts 14 and verse number 1. And it came to pass. Uh, hang on. Let's go back one more. To Acts 13, 1, sorry. Now, therefore, in the church that was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, see that word, teachers, as Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucia, Cyrene, Menaean, which had brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Yeah, the guy that had grew up with Herod. You imagine a guy grew up with Herod, washed, worshiping, falls, God, and then he becomes a saint. And then he starts teaching about the Bible. What a beautiful soul. He grew up with Harry. So that means if you grew up with Donald Trump or Barack Obama, the beloved Obama, you would go in and say, man, we grew up, but I, I, I'm a gospel teacher now. I go to such and such church. Are you a preacher? No, I'm a gospel teacher. No, I didn't want to preach. You know, but yeah, I used to, I used to eat corn dog with Obama. You know, we used to hang out all the time. Somebody got to know him. He didn't pop out of heaven. Somebody ain't with him. He's just a human being. Look at Ephesians 4. People begin to just not a human being. And has no value in the knowledge of him spiritually because he's not a saint. At least if he is, if, if Obama was a saint, he's done a lousy job of this planet. You promoting homosexuality? Oh, man, I wouldn't even tell nobody I'm a Christian. I would keep that a secret and embarrassment. Promoting, applauding. It takes courage to be a homosexual. What? So it takes courage to be a murderer. Man, I cut a dude's throat and I killed this baby. Yeah! Yeah, to courage. Paint the building red for blood cause for my money. See, see, it sounds ugly on the inside. That's because it is ugly. It is ugly. Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and 
teachers. The teacher is different than evangelists. That is. If you're here and not a member of the church, recognize the Lord loves you. He wants to save you. How will he do that? First, you've got to acknowledge your loss. Can't act like you're saved. Acts 19, 1 through 5 says you must be baptized again. You come from a denomination church. Christ dies, buried the third day, rose again. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. If you believe that, you can be baptized now. Are you willing to acknowledge that you sin? You want to change? Acts 2, 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for admission of sins. You shall see the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and unto your children, unto all that are fall. Even as men of the Lord our God shall call them. In other words, he testified and encouraged them, saying, Save yourself, for this unto all that is a crooked generation. Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized the same day, about 3,000 souls added unto them. And they continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine, breaking bread and prayers, and the Lord added to the church daily, such should be saved. One important thing that continued in was the fellowship. First John chapter 1 to walk in the light as Christ is in life. That's critical, brethren. You know, one thing you got to learn to tell your family is make sure you let them know. If you're living with a man or a woman, you're not married to them, we expect disaster to hit your life. Whether it's periodically or bed chamber, which means they stay with you regularly. Y'all got mail coming out together. You know, shoe, your shoes stay there. Your socks in the drawer. You know, you live there regularly. Just let them know, I expect disaster to hit your life. I'm going to pray for you. As Job prayed for his son, maybe the Lord will extend some of the damage that it's coming to you. If you telling them it's going to be okay, all right, brethren, we're going to look for disaster to hit your life. Because it's coming. It's coming. See, because God says, okay, before I kill you spiritually, I'm going to whoop you physically. I'm going to do it. First Corinthians 5, turn them over. See, this is the problem we have. Okay, what if my mama is a saint and living wild? Do your mama need something? She needs some money. She needs to go to the store. Okay. Your service. We having a dinner. I'm not going to come, mama. Well, baby, I'm, you have a mama. You know how you're living. I'm sorry. I love you, but you got boyfriends in the house. I'm not going to be able to do that. I came and took you to the store today. You know so, so you're going to just read your mouth now the Bible and tell me eat with sinners. You're a sinner, mom. You, me eating dinner with you at the family dinner don't do nothing for you. That's not helping you. Take me to the store, buying your medicine, that helped you. You're not married to that dude. He's living over there. I'm not coming to eat over there. I love you, and that's it. I would tell my mama that in a minute. Why? Because I don't want to go to hell. So Paul, did he say except family and children, cousins and uncles? He didn't say that, did he? One who is a brother. That's why you have to watch it. Some, some children need to tell baby, I'm good. I don't need nothing. Because I know you're not right. I don't need nothing. I'm good. I'm good. God bless you. Did you go back to church yet? See, because you don't realize why things, your prayers may be here. Because you got sinners that say they saints all around you. Do you know how you can help somebody understand something? Tell them, I don't need nothing from you till you give your heart back to Jesus. God bless you. And can you do that? Think about it. Look, I'm standing there now, praise God, I feel good. But I'm telling you, I'm going to tell my kids. I heard how you're living. Daddy, okay. I got a nurse come in and watch me. Thank you, though. Now, when you give your life to Jesus, you can come in and go buy me some medicine and stuff. I don't need nothing. Why? Because I, I got to send a message to you. I don't want you around me because you're a sinner. You're a sinner. Get your life right. That's the best man you can see. Get your life right. See, you don't have no problem telling friends that, but family is different. Family get us in trouble. Ask David. Family get you in trouble. Get you in trouble. Get you almost on a slippery slope right in the hell. David had to catch himself. And he said, at the end of my life, I'm not like the other. See, we put too much on David. David said, I'm not like the other men on the earth. You know what he said? The other men really did. He said, yeah, because he said, my house is tore up. I listen, things go down, a little brag, touch another man's wife, you know, and, and didn't fix it the right way. See, when you stop that, you got to handle your kids. David was scared to handle his kids. Scared to handle laugh some. Yeah, scared. So that's what David's talking about. He's saying, it wasn't Bathsheba's, I didn't handle it right, so my house tore up. 
But God gave me grace. So now you go try that and let's see if you can say the same thing. See, that's what the lesson is for um, David. Don't do what he did. He liked David. He might not like you like that on me. So don't do what David did. Learn to tell the family what's going on, brother. It's just a message. I don't know nothing. It's just a message. Take it to heart that you can be in here with the Lord. If you need to be baptized, call the number on the bottom of the screen. You need that. You need to be baptized. If you're here, you're in church, stay standing if you need to be baptized. If you're here, you need prayer. Come on, somebody together. We stand and sing here with invitation. Under far away from now I'm coming home. The sin had the sin. Maybe see it.